just want you to stay in this place right now. And if you're big and if you're little, I want you to try and do this. I want you to just stop for a minute and feel your body. Feel your feet connecting to the ground. Feel your bottom connected to the seat or your arms lifted up. Feel the pace of your heart. Is your heart beating fast or is it beating slow? What does it feel like in your tummy? Do you feel a bit nervous? Have you got butterflies or are you excited? Or are you a bit worried? Just take note of your body right now. Is your breathing fast or is it slow? Because what's happening in our body right now, I believe is connected to what God wants to do in us today. Jesus, do what only you can do in us. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to church, all the big people and the little people and the dancing people and the singing people and the upside down people. It's really nice to have you all. We've got some visitors. We've got lots of regulars. So welcome. I'm just going to... I felt like God highlighted a verse to me earlier in the week and I just... I feel like this is a declaration to say over us today. It comes from Psalm 33. And it's the Lord alone is our radiant hope. Every single one of us. The Lord alone is our radiant help hope sorry he's our help and he's our hope and we trust in him with all our hearts his wrap around presence will strengthen us as we trust we rejoice with an uncontained joy I want to know what an uncontained joy looks like for us all flowing that uncontained joy flowing from Yahweh let your love and your steadfast kindness overshadow us today and continually for we trust and we wait upon you, God. Yeah, amen. So we're going to, our kids are going to scootle off, I think, because they're really keen and excited. So if you're a parent, can you just sign them in? It's just what we need to do. Um, we've got men's group on Tuesday night at the base. So if you're a man, you can come at seven and eat pizza. Is that what they do? They eat pizza and they talk about Jesus. A secret men's business. They hug the tree. No. Um, uh, Meg has an announcement to make. Okay. okay. So um, one of our dear people, Beth uh, Varent, is up in Wollongong Hospital. So um, she's, she's got pneumonia and she's hurt her head. So we're just going to pray for her now. Um, so God, I just thank you for Beth. I thank you for who you say she is, Father. And I thank you for the nurses and the doctors that are looking after her. I pray, Father God, that you will encounter her in new ways, that you will bring her health and wholeness in Jesus' name. And Ch Chantel, did she come? Chantel? No. Ch is she here? No? Nah. Yep, we're going to pray for her. So she's off to India which I'm a bit jealous about, but she's off to India. So God, just thank you for, sh I can never say her name, Chatel. I just, uh, Chatel. <laughs> God, we thank you for Chatel and we just thank you for her trip to India. I thank you for um, your protection and your grace and mercy as she travels home to visit her family and her loved ones in Jesus' name. This is a message for the women. We've been invited to a sisterhood night at Celebration Church. It's a worship night on Sunday, the 3rd of April at 5.30pm. 
So if you are a woman amongst us and you would like to go join with some other churches for a worship night, uh, come and see me and we'll arrange to get there. And uh, it's at 5.30, so I'm, it, it just... The cafe will be open so we can have dinner there afterwards. So if you would like to be part of that, come and see me. That's Sunday the 3rd of April at 5.30 in the evening. Um, I just wanted to tell you that um, the farm is going lovely. It's a little bit wet, but it's growing and things are happening. Um, So harvest will happen in April, we believe. So we would like to invite the church at your own pace, we're open on Mondays and uh, on Fridays and Saturdays, and it's five dollars per adult. Uh, kids under sixteen are for free, so you can come and just picnic and enjoy the space, or you can come and pick hu- um, nuts, big chestnuts. No walnuts this year, but big chestnuts. So come and you can pick some um, chestnuts, and then they'll be priced, and you have to pay for those. But um, come and join us and pray as we go, because we're like all fresh to this whole thing. So yeah. Uh, and the last thing is, Jenny, do you want to come up? Jenny's got some information to share. Thank you. Okay. Um, Meg and Pete have kindly given me permission to share a little bit this morning about a ministry that I've been involved with for the last 10 years. Um, back in about 2012, uh, we had a speaker at the church from Crossroads Prison Ministry and they came and spoke about their work in the prisons and they were looking for people to mark correspondence lessons for the prisoners Um, and I signed up for that and I've been doing that for the last 10 years and I've been asked by Crossroads if I would present some information to my church about what they do because of course they're always looking for people to support them. Um, Three ways I guess to become a mentor which is what I'll be talking about a little today to pray for them Um, and the other way would be of course financial support it's entirely voluntarily run from Sydney and um, uh, it's just a fantastic ministry and I guess if we think about the work that Jesus can do in a heart you can be in prison and be free if you know Jesus you could be free but you could still be in a prison if you don't know him so um, a lot of prisoners have come to faith through the years, through chaplaincy, through the courses that Crossroads do and through other ministries that are in prison. So Pete's just going to pop a little video on just as an intro, um, wherever he is. Thank you. I remember the first day, the sound of a steel door slamming. My life had just been restricted to the cardboard box I held in front of me. I was facing multiple charges with a penalty of life imprisonment. The whole reason for Crossroads to exist is for people like Brendan. Crossroads provides a Bible correspondence program which consists of over 100 lessons spread out over 12 courses and three tiers. At the center of the Crossroads program is a mentoring process between mentors and students which is nurtured by the writing of letters. And what comes out of this is a beautiful relationship that will last beyond the prison walls. I started the Crossroads Bible course as a skeptic. I knew there was a higher power in our universe, but I was yet to feel his presence. I've learned now nothing from this world can fill that void. That place in our heart, it's reserved for God. Every person can turn around. Um, Criminals that you read about in the paper and you think, oh, never. Uh, can become really aware and repentant and love God. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Okay, so that's just a little intro. And I'll just talk for a few minutes and I have got some information if you want to look at some of the study courses that the prisoners are able to do. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the PowerPoint working, but I'll talk briefly through um, just some points. Uh, So Crossroads Prison Ministry is actually an interdenominational program. Uh, I think it was started in America, but here in Australia, we look after not just Australia, 
but Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands and Fiji as well. Um, and it's been very challenging, let me tell you, marking some of those lessons that come from um, Papua New Guinea. Sometimes I'm hard pressed just to understand what they're saying, so that can be quite a challenge. Um, but at the moment I'm paired with a student from Tasmania called Fiona, and prior to that I was paired with a student from South Australia. And, um, but when you go in at the beginning level, you mark a different student's work each time you get a lesson sent to you. So there's not a, a personal connection as such that you develop, but you, answer, you mark that student's lesson. Uh, you pray for them, obviously, and you write them a letter. And that's the big challenge for me, because a little uh, lesson arrives and I go, mm, okay, I'll, write the, I'll answer the, the, go through their marking, that's great. And then I think, you know, sometimes you're not in a real good place yourself and you've got to write a, an inspiring letter. And you know, some of the prisoners, they keep all those letters because they never hear from anybody else. And um, some of the, um, the statistics, if I can just grab those. Uh, so these were, um, in Australia, there are 43,000 people imprisoned and 95% of prisoners eventually get released. 66% will be re-arrested. But people that have done the Crossroads course, less than 11% of those go back to prison. So that's pretty amazing, from 66% down to 11%. And that's not a statistic you'll hear if you're watching that SBS program about people being released from prison. Um, only 12% of people in prison get regular visitors. Isn't that awful? 12%. 12 so you can imagine for some of these prisoners being able to do the course, getting to know Jesus, getting a letter that's encouraging and um, that, that uh, helps them to know more about the Bible is really an amazing uh, thing for them. And some of those letters just get kept. They never get thrown away. This is a little... Um, card that came from one student that was sent to me, not to me personally, I just happened to be the next person that marked that lesson and it says, Dear Instructor, because I'm always blessed, I decided to design for you this card out of my heart just because of your moving and encouraging replies to me. Here is my prayer for you based in Psalms 91.11. God will put his angels in charge of you wherever you are and because you always give the best out of your heart to me, the Lord will be forever good to you. In all your replies, you give me the best instructions of hope. God will also bless your children because of you. Thank you. And then there's a necklace actually on the front you may not be able to see, but it says the necklace that I designed is my own traditional one and it always reminds me of Proverbs 3, 34. Always tie this advice on my neck like necklace for reminder. So, you know, you do get some really special, special um, little things from people and letters. Um, over the 10 years that I've been with Crossroads, I just opted to do once a fortnight. And when I look at the numbers that I've marked, which is roughly 136, that's really worked out to probably once a month over 10 years. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really an amazing um, program. A lot of times the chaplains sign people up for the program. When they sign up, they get a free Bible and the first lesson, then they complete the lesson, they send it back to Crossroad, um, and then Crossroad sends it on to the mentor. So you're not, uh, you're not sharing your full name and address details with the prisoners. So it's all quite, um, you know, a safe place to work from in that sense. Um, so, yeah, so just to reiterate, I guess the, um, the three ways that people can get involved is through prayer, um, to pray for Crossroads, and you can sign up for their regular newsletters. You can join as a mentor, as I have, um, and they will train you up. We did do a bit of a training program at the time that I signed up because there was a few of us that were involved and the other way is financial assistance. So how they work in the prisons, um, for example, in Fiji, there's 15 prisons. That's unbelievable, isn't it? 15 prisons and Crossroads is in two of them. In the Solomons, there are six prisons and Crossroads is in two. 
and in Papua New Guinea there are 18 prisons with, um, and we're working in five of them through Crossroads and there's some, um, yeah, there's a, that's a lot of inmates. I don't have, I haven't written down the number for Australia, but I would have it somewhere. So it took us a long time to get into Victorian prisons. There was a lot of um, resistance there, but um, I, I believe they are now working in some of the Victorian prisons. So um, if you have any questions or you're interested, just come and chat to me. I'll be over here somewhere and I've got some more um, information that I can show you. Uh, about that. So it has been a really amazing experience for me and um, and if, yeah, if you're interested and it's something that you want to do, it'll be an amazing experience for you. When I was, just in closing, when I was looking through all the Crossroads information, I noticed they had a Facebook site. Now, I'm not a Facebook person, I'm not on Facebook, but they had a Facebook site which I was able to look at. So if you're interested, if you go to the Crossroads Australian site and look at their Facebook site, they have lots of little testimonies of prisoners and they have encouraging words as well and things that ex-prisoners have posted. And I found a, a wonderful film clip, it was a video clip of a guy called Micah Tyler. Has anyone heard of Micah Tyler? He's done a little, he's a, he's a musician, he's a singer, and he's done a little film clip called Walking Free. It's a fantastic song. And um, if you get a chance to look at it, you can probably Google it or get onto it through the Facebook site. It's actually not promoting Crossroads. It's pr promoting another prison ministry that I haven't heard of, but it was just a beautiful, um, beautiful thing to look at. So that was Micah Tyler walking through. So thanks, everybody. Wow, thanks Jen, that's awesome. How's, every, <clears throat> how's everyone's week been? Pretty good? This morning I want to speak to you about how do, we, how do we keep the fire of God with inside us? I'm not sure about you, but over the last few years I've noticed that during COVID and during what's happened is that people have got out of the routine of meeting together and people have got out of the routine of doing things together and it's really hard to inspire the fire of God within us without meeting together and without being with each other. And, and so how do we do that? How do we keep alive? How do we stop allowing the oppression of the world to take, taking over our lives? And how do we stand strong in that? Anyone got a quick fix answer? You can come up here and preach and I'm happy to listen. But it's, it's so true at the moment I don't know if you realise we're, you know, we're out in community all the time. The community is in distress. Everyone's in distress. Everybody's tired. Everyone's waiting for the next thing to happen. Is it going to be a flood? Is it going to be a fire? Is it going to be pestilence now? What's going to happen? People are living in fear and faith and fear cannot coexist. When fear's there, faith's gone. So faith and fear, fear and God can't coexist. They don't coexist in the same place. So, so we've got to learn how do we keep the fire of God on the inside. And I just, I was, as I was thinking about this and praying about this, I thought of one man in the Bible that, that speaks about the fire of God. And that is his young guy by the name of Jeremiah. He was 17 years of age when God called him. 17 years of age, God said to him, hey, Jeremiah, I want you to do something for me. I said, he said, I want you to be a prophet to all nations. 17-year-old kid, prophet to all nations. And Jeremiah complained and said, hey, I'm so young, I can't do that. I don't know what to say. I'm young, no one will listen to me. I'm just a whippersnapper. My parents don't even listen to me. And you want to send me to the nations? And God said to him this, he said, I will give you the words to say. And then in Jeremiah chapter 1, he came up to Jeremiah and he touched his lips. He reached out his hand and touched his lips. And he said, you will go to the nations. And this is what he said to him. He said, you will go to the nations and the kingdoms and you will uproot, tear down, Destroy, overthrow, build and plant. He said you will uproot, 
tear down, destroy and overthrow and build and plant. And so Jeremiah started this journey, starting in Jeremiah chapter 1, all the way to the end, uh, on going and being the mouthpiece of God to everybody. And during that time, he was going, and he didn't go with the, the gospel. He didn't go with the gospel of the new covenant. He went with the rules and the regulations. So everywhere he went, he was telling people, hey, 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 you can't do that. You're not doing that right. This is what you're going to, this is what you have to do. And if you don't do it right, God's going to come and smite you. He's going to come and whack you. And he was, he started to get depressed because every time, every time he went out, he was just telling people they're doing the wrong thing. And if they don't do the right thing, they're going to get some pestilence. And so he started to get depressed. And then in chapter 20, he He's just saying to God, look, God, I can't do this anymore. I want to be the bearer of good news, not bad news. I, I want to be the bearer of something that's, that's meaningful and powerful to me. And so he was just saying to God, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And then in verse 9 of chapter 20, he said, he said this. But if I say I will not remember him nor speak of him anymore, then in my heart it becomes like a fire shut up in my bones and I can't bear it, I can't hold it, I can't handle this any longer. I just have to let it out. He knew even though it was hard, there was this fire deep inside him that couldn't be contained. And even though he was going through all this stuff, he knew that this had to come out. The message of God had to come out. There was something inside of him. Even though he'd just been through two years of COVID, even though he wasn't going to church much because, you know, the churches were closed, he knew there was a fire in his soul, a fire locked up inside that had to come out. It had to come out. It had to come out because if it didn't, it would destroy him. And it's just, it's just like so many others. You know, we, we, I don't know if you remember David. David was in this place of depression. He was in this place of depression where he, he couldn't get out of it. He couldn't get out of his room. And, and he just woke up one day and he, and he goes to God and he says, and he speaks into his spirit and he says, Awake, awake, O soul, awake to the things of God, awake myself. And, and, he, and he spoke to his heart, he spoke to his condition, and he started to come alive. And Paul, Paul was in the New Testament, Paul was in this situation where he said, you know, my, my body doesn't do what I want it to do. It, it does all these things, but what I do is I beat my body into submission. I make it so it actually does the things that God's called me to do. He speaks life into himself and speaks life into his situation and I believe we're in a place right now, you and I every one of us where we need to start speaking life into us because we've got used to the new normal and that new normal isn't God's normal, that new normal isn't God's normal, we've got used to the normal, the new normal of oh you know we don't see many people or or you know, we just don't do as many adventurous things. And I'm not talking about the adventure. I'm talking about the fire of God within us. So if you've got just a few minutes, I want to share how do we keep the fire of God from being extinguished in our heart. And I want to go back to Jeremiah chapter 1 and use, use the words that Jeremiah was told. And that the number one is this, uproot. We need to uproot the lies that have been spoken over us. We need to uproot the lies that have been spoken over us. And we need to understand we need to own those lies, but we need to understand they are not ours to carry. And I want to speak to you about that. What does that mean? What are the lies that you, that you personally are believing about yourself? Not rhetorical. What are the lies that you're believing about yourself? It might be that you don't matter. 
It might be that you're not good enough. It might be that you're a mistake. These are all lies. The enemy wants you to believe that. The enemy wants you to understand that because it renders you useless. But God wants you to understand their lies. And we are here to uproot the lies that have got inside our lives. I mean, what are some of the lies that you think people are believing right now around the world, around in our community? I know one of the biggest lies around here is that, that, that they don't matter, that people don't matter, that people don't know who they are. And if they don't know who they are, they don't know whose they are. Our mistakes have defined us. That's a lie of the devil. Your mistakes, your failures have not defined you. The, our what? Our past? That our past defines you. Your past does not define you. You know, our past, our mistakes are just springboards of learning so we can mature and, and do the things God's created us to do. What are some of the lies that you're believing about yourself? Let's be vulnerable right here. What are some of the lies? I can't. Yeah. My identity is in what I do. So if, my, if what I do fails or what I do doesn't work anymore, I'm nothing. I'm too old. I'm too young. You might be in between. I'm not too old or too, too young. I'm not stupid and I'm not mature. What am I? I mean, there's always something. There's always something that in our heart that the enemy niggles in our heart and he says, you're not good enough for that. You know, people are actually going to discover who you are. That's a lie of the enemy. And we need to uproot them. And how do we do that? We see them, we expose them, and we say, that is not what my Father in heaven says about me. And I'm not going to believe that anymore. And I'm going to lift this out of my heart, and I'm going to throw it over there. I'm not going to listen to that anymore. So number one, we have to uproot the lies in our life. We have to uproot the lies that the enemy has established in our life. Number two, we need to tear down. We need to tear down the mindsets that have been established because of those lies. There are mindsets that have happened in you and, 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 you, and it's changed the way you think. Because you've lived with a lie so long, you, you believe that and the mind has to change. You know, what does is, what is the Bible talk about? The renewing of your mind. We need, to, we need to allow God to come in. We need to allow God to come in. Romans 12, 2. Don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, as the patterns of the world come in, our mindset goes to the ruler of this world. And that is not Jesus. But we need to be transformed. So we need to allow our mind to be transformed. And sometimes that might just look like discipline of positive talk. You know, looking at yourself in the mirror and going, oh my gosh, is that me now? Instead of start speaking life into yourself. Change your mindset. Change your mind that wants to rob you of life. And every time you, you, every time you uproot and every time you tear down, you start freeing yourself and the fire of God starts sparking and living again on the inside. We need to allow his fire in here. You can't do it without it. We can't do it. We can't, we can't see the obstacles ahead of us without the fire of God pushing us through. It's too much. It's too much to bear. So number one, uproot. We've got to tear down the mindsets. And number three, we need to destroy those defensive behaviours that have taken root. 
Not sure you know what that is, but I sure do. Do you know what a defensive behaviour is? It's when someone says something you don't like and your defence mechanisms jump up, your walls jump up and you go, you're like this. And it's like you're ready for a battle. That's not God. God doesn't do that. We can hear healthy discussions. We can hear healthy opinions without us wanting to, you need to believe what I believe. There's a defence we need to learn how to destroy and remove the defensive behaviours in our life. Anyone got an example of a defensive behaviour that they u- utilise in their life? Anyone? Isolation? Exactly. I don't like what you say. You're not going to see me anymore. Thanks, Ash. I don't agree with you. You're wrong, Pete. No, I'm not. It's these... Sorry? It's okay. It's okay to say I don't agree, but it's the defence that's happened because you've believed a lie. You've allowed mindsets to set in. And now... Your behaviour is reflecting the lie and the mindsets. We need to destroy those defensive behaviours that have taken root. And do you know what taken root means? It means they're living in your heart. We can't, can't live like that. It destroys us, not others. You think that defensive behaviour hurts others, it hurts you. It isolates you. It removes you from relationship and it moves you to a place where one day you wake up and you go, they were right, I'm alone. And that mindset has left you alone. So we need to uproot the lie. We need to tear down the mindsets. We need to destroy those defensive behaviours that have taken root. And we need to, number four, overthrow, remove. We need to overthrow the ruler of your life. And it could be yourself. And we need to put Jesus back on the throne. We need to put Jesus back on the throne. You know, uh, I remember the first, first lockdown we had in 2020, Meg and I decided we, every Sunday we couldn't go to church, so we'd go to the beach. We were down at Jeringong walking along the beach, and I'm going, I've never known this. Every Sunday I've been in church. Mate, I understand why people don't go to church. This is awesome. We had a swim. We said hello to a thousand people because everyone's down the beach. It was awesome. And I'm going, wow, I can get used to this. Six weeks of doing that. And then, you know, the, our board comes back together and we go, you know, we've got to start church again. I said, do we have to? I'm really enjoying this. You get into a routine because, do you know what? I replaced God in some of the areas of my life and I put my wants and desires there instead and and I realized that this is awesome you know why go to church and and vomit there in a community hall when I can be at the beach and I started to look inwardly I started to think of things selfishly and I started to realize that I've got out of a routine of just spending time with God. And now I know you don't just spend time with God on a Sunday. You know, this is just a celebration. But when you get out of those routines, new routines come in. And again, mindsets start, defensive behaviours start. I need to replace what I've put here, Lord, with you again. So Jesus... I overthrow who I've put on the throne and I put you back on the throne. I want you to...
to be the number one. Yeah, I moved you to number two, but I want you to be number one again. I want you to be number one in my life. So I overthrow that person, and usually it's yourself. I remove myself from that throne, and I put you there, Jesus. So the amazing thing in this scripture that, G- that God shared with Jeremiah is that four of the items were all about removing strongholds, mindsets, kings. And the last two is about establishing and building. Number five is build. Allow Jesus to rebuild and let him reframe what is important. We need to allow Jesus to come in right now and reframe what is important. Because our senses have been scattered. Our thoughts have been scattered. We've we've been knocked off course. Now he's saying, hey, I want you to reframe and I want you to build now. I want you to build up the framework so you can contain what I'm wanting to do. I'm wanting you to build up in your personal life and in your ministry life and in your community life. I'm wanting you to rebuild the walls so you can contain or you can you can have a structure that can hold what I'm doing. And it, and it started to challenge me on the on our on our mindsets and and you know over the last two years I'm in salt our ministry side to our community has exploded. We've, you know, we went from eight staff to 26 staff and, and 150 volunteers and all these people doing all these wonderful things and it can be sometimes quite confronting and it can be sometimes daunting and stressful, Mega. See, see, as you can tell, as you can tell, I'm the stressor in the family. Meg's a happy-go-lucky. And so, you know, I'm at night not sleeping at night and... And, um, and so what we do is that God is coming in now and he's saying, I don't want you to look at the past. I don't want you to look at the past and go, okay, this is how we do it. I want you to build something new that can contain, that can hold, that can facilitate the presence of God within a community. So he's saying that to all of us. I'm I'm building something new in your life right now so that you can contain and you can represent and you can facilitate the presence of God in your life. So what does that look like? But that's what he's doing. He's coming and saying, hey, I want want to come in and build. I'm knocking at your door and I'm saying, hey, I've got got the jackhammer here, guys. I've got the crowbars here. What, What walls do we need to knock down so I can, so that you can host more and more of my presence. So you can host my presence. It's not just about a half an hour of prayer. It's not just about a time of worship. It's about you hosting my presence 24-7. Stuff has to be removed for me to build my presence within you. What are you, what are you going to let go of? Now, now, that you've, now that you've uprooted, you've ta- torn down, you've destroyed the, the defensive behaviours, you've overthrown who's on there, now that I'm back on the throne, this is what I want to establish. I want to rebuild stuff in you. You're not going to be the same as you were yesterday because I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing in your heart. I'm doing a new thing in your community. I'm doing a new thing because the old thing does not work anymore. I'm doing something new. Will you allow me to build with inside you? That's a, um, that's a tough question, isn't it? You might be like the council and they want to see all the plans. They want to see that you've looked at every aspect of this. And you might go like, okay, God, yeah, sure, give me your DA. I want to see your plans for what you want to do with my life because 
I'm ready with this stamp and I'll approve it all. Deny it. Hey, what you've done, you've just put yourself back on the throne again. Overthrow who's on the throne and put him back on the throne. Do you know, God doesn't give you every detail. Because that's what's called faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things we don't see with our natural eyes. He actually wants you to choose him even though you don't know what's going to happen. He actually wants you to choose him to build in your life even though you don't know what could be, which wall could be taken out. But that's what he's asking. You want that fire of God in your life. You've got to let him build the framework. You've got to let him build the fire pit so his presence can be held. And number six is this, and this is the last point. We need to plant. Let Jesus plant his presence in us in such a way that we just start to grow. And it's like this, I see this, and I just see it now, it's like he's building this fire pit in us, and it's to contain the presence of God. And what happens in a fire pit when a fire is going, what happens? A little bit of heat, a little bit of fire, a little bit of action, sparks go off everywhere. You know what happens is a community can come around a fire pit and be warmed and be found secure. He's wanting to build inside every one of us a fire pit. And then he's going to plant his presence in there. So you'll do what he's called you to do. So I want to challenge you this morning. You might be over what's been going on or you might be just still living in fear like a lot of us are. I want to challenge you guys, uproot the lies that have been spoken over you. Allow God to come in and change your mind Tear down the mindsets. Tear down those mindsets that have locked you in to a small paradigm rather than God's larger paradigm. Destroy and decide to take out, take down those defensive behaviours that stop you from really being in relationship with others. That make you always right and them always wrong. Start living like the Jewish culture, talking with two hands, weighing things up and going, hey, I'll listen to you, you listen to me. We can be healthy in this. This is who we are. Defensiveness has no, no place in this. Overthrow that person, usually yourself, that you've put on the throne and say, Lord, I take myself off that throne and I put you back on. I can't do this alone. I don't want to do it alone. I don't want to be isolated from your presence. I don't want to be isolated from you any longer. Please come. I put you back on the throne. And Lord, now build. Build that container that can hold you. Build that fire pit in my life so I can be like Jeremiah and say, I have to speak. It's like Paul saying, I'm compelled to preach the gospel. There's this fire inside his life that he couldn't not preach the gospel. It just fell out of him every time he went somewhere because he, he was able to build a fire pit in his life. And God planted his fire in his heart. So Heavenly Father, I just pray this morning, Lord, that you fill us to overflowing. Father God, that those lies 
uh, right now. And, and, and just as we're sitting here, I just want you to picture those things that are happening in your life. And I just speak to the lies that we've believed in our life and I command them to be just uprooted right now. All those lies to be uprooted and taken from every person's mind. Their mindsets are now renewed, Father God, that we right now, we tear down those mindsets in the name of Jesus. So Father, just come and tear them down. Tear down those mindsets in the name of Jesus. Just come into our hearts and tear them down. Lord, we just, we just give you permission right now to destroy those defensive behaviours, those defensive mechanisms in our life that stop us getting close to people because we don't want to be hurt again. We're not going to allow that to happen anymore. So, Father, come and destroy those defensive behaviours. And, Lord, I put you on the throne. I make a decision right now, here today, and... And I put you on the throne of my life, Lord. I don't want to live it my way anymore. It's too hard. I can't do it without you, Jesus. I can't do it without you in my heart. So come right now, Lord Jesus, and build in me this container, this vessel, this earthen vessel that can hold your presence. And come and fill me with your presence and allow me to come alive again so father i just speak to every person here i just pray and prophesy that the fire of god comes on the inside of every person here today the fire of god comes on the inside of every one of us on the inside of every one of us it lifts us up and lifts us out into the very will that you have for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I just feel like on the end of that, I feel like I saw a picture of all of us sitting here today and God dropping onto us and into us little gifts that are specifically tailored for you and for me. So this, it might just be the seed of an idea of, of what he's actually going to blow upon if you'll receive it, to, to set it on fire. But it's because we've never been here before. Many of us have had the rug pulled out from under us. We, we, you know, the old has definitely gone and we're standing in a new place of how do we move forward from here, Lord? How do I move forward into my future with you? How do I move forward in ministry with you? How do I carry the things that I thought you wanted me to do now when everything's changed and the ground has shifted? And I feel like today he's saying, I want to drop within you seeds of promise of things I have for you to unwrap. And it may be just an idea. It may be just an idea of hosting a family dinner. It's, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be huge. It's just something he wants to drop within us that he actually says, this is, I want to co-labor with you. I want to work with you. I love you. I know you. I want to give you a brand new idea of how to carry my presence. Let go of the old. It's, it's, it has gone. But it's exciting standing in the new. Because there are new things he wants to do amongst us and in us and through us. It may simply be to bake a cake for a neighbour. It, it may start small, but he's going to work with you and what brings life to you. So, Father, I just thank you for everyone sitting here. I thank you for the ministries that sit in this room that are, you know what, this, that's life. Life is ministry. It's not ministry and life. Life is ministry. So all of us get to be ministers of your gospel. So thank you for every person that has a purpose and a calling in this room, and that's every one of us, that you would drop within us new ideas, new hope for the future,
new ways of doing things, that you would burn within us for the things that burn in your heart. Would you burn within us? Give us, he is the God of creativity. Give us creative ways to serve you. Break us out of our, thank you for breaking us out of our old paradigms. And I hold my hands open wide expectantly for the new. And I just thank you that you will plant within each of us the new of what you are going to do in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Hang around for a cup of tea, cup of coffee and fellowship. Have a great week, hey? God bless you.